extreme emotionality in men. What is it? Well, by my definition, it is when a man is having his life choices dictated by the emotions that he's feeling at any given moment. And to be honest, most people are actually in this situation. Most men are in this situation. And unfortunately, only some men take the path of least resistance. And in a lot of cases, I will say that they still will do things that they don't want to do sometimes, but only because the pressure and the pain of not doing those things would be great and they know it. So they choose to do things that they don't want to do, which seems to be contrary to the initial point, but really it's not because they take it to some, like say if it's a scale from one here to 10 here, and they know that uh, discomfort level of 10 is gonna get them their desired life outcome. They'll just go to discomfort level of three or something like that so that they will have the social acceptance of the society, of the peers, the friends and family, and this sort of thing, and they don't take it all the way. But I, what I really want to discuss way more than this situation is the people who are at the level one, who basically are always taking the path of least resistance. And the biggest example of this group of people is homeless people. See, homeless people are basically, most of the time, they're doing drugs. I have a lot of experience dealing with homeless people from my experience when I was working as a security guard. So most of those people take drugs in order to escape the pain that they feel when they're sober in reality. When they're sober, their mind is sending them all these endorphins of guilt, shame, anger, bunch of negative emotions, their head's a mess. And it's because they kept putting off dealing with the pain and the trauma of life until the future. And how do they do that? They do that by getting high, by using drugs, by using alcohol. And does that solve the problem? It solves it in the short term, but the problem is still there. You just feel like you have no problem for a short amount of time, but when you sober up, you still have the exact same problems and you're actually gonna have more problems because you're just pushing away all your problems, pretending that they don't exist until the next time that you get high or you get drunk and you do that again and again and again and again, that's how people end up homeless. And they don't want to go through the discomfort of quitting drugs and alcohol and getting their life back together. I know that it's possible because you might think that I'm being too harsh by saying that. You might think, oh, you've never been in that type of situation. Well, I have been in a similar situation because I used to do drugs. I used to do Xanax, which is one of the hardest drugs on the market. And I know for a fact that a lot of the Xanax that I did was actually laced with other things too. And I bought that on purpose because I was that type of person who was putting off my problems until the future. I never got to the point of being homeless because I just didn't want to experience that. But uh, so basically I would do drugs as a part-time thing. Like whenever I didn't have responsibilities, I would be high 100% of the time. And then a lot of times it got to the point where even in my daily life, I was just getting high all the time anyways. So anyways, uh, I know that people can quit because I quit. I went through that. I also used to smoke cigarettes. I quit that too. These things, Xanax is one of the hardest drugs to uh, quit. I did that. It's possible. Anybody can do it. It's just that people don't want to go through the pain. For me, when I quit Xanax, I had withdrawals that lasted for months. I was craving that drug every single day. Literally every single day, not a single day off. I would be in my bed um, trying to sleep and I'll be thinking about how I wanted to 
to do that drug because it gets a, it gets a large psychological hold on people and you don't want to quit because of how the drug affects your mental state. So that's one type of person. That's the lowest um, that's the lowest that a person can get basically. A human is basically no different from an animal at that point. I was too harsh by saying that the maybe the average uh, I think I was too harsh by saying that most people are only going to a three out of ten in terms of discomfort. They're probably going to a five or six. Because, yeah, compared to a one, how those people live just purely based on the moment is a bigger gap. There's a bigger gap between those decisions than, than a one and a three out of ten. So anyways, now I'm going to talk about somebody that I know personally. I'm not going to give you any specific details about who that person is, but basically it's a family member of mine. And he, I, in my opinion, he's just totally messing up his life because uh, it's, it's even hard for me to talk about it because I'm just, uh, you know, it, it affects you personally. So even for me, I feel, of course, I feel emotions just like anybody else, but I'm still just going to pursue it and talk about it. So basically for him, he decided to focus on making music, right? So that's, he decided that was the purpose of his life. And sure, that's fine, more power to you. But I had told him that you can work a normal job and then you can make music on the side. He works a normal job, but he has no money. He's not working consistently enough and the other thing I told him was that you should improve the amount of income that you're earning um, because 70% of people live paycheck to paycheck and he's a statistic he's just in that 70% not saving any money month after month it's, uh, it's, it's unbelievable to me because you know, you could even say like 100, 200 per month if your expenses are that close to your amount of income. But he's decided not to do that. He's decided to focus on making music instead. And the other thing about it too, I did not mention this to him because even what I told him already was he interpreted it as a direct attack on him. So his ego was really hurt by what I said, and he was emotional about it. So the other thing in the situation is that his music is not even good. Like that's the worst part. It's not even good. Like if it was good, if it was, you know, if people liked it and he was starting to get some traction, then I would understand it. But he has no traction. His, and I've, I've heard his music. It's not musically pleasing, let me put it that way. So he's pursuing an area that he has no talent in. And I hope I'm proven wrong. I really do. I do hope, I wish him all the best. And I hope that I'm wrong. I hope that uh, people love his music and that he finds success. But... I think it's really unlikely that that's the case because he doesn't have more time in the day than other people. There's so many people trying to make music and this sort of thing. And on top of that, I think a lot of them are more talented at that particular niche than he is. And I'm not trying to diss him or put him down or anything like that. I'm just stating objective reality from my perspective, what I think is objective reality. And it's unfortunate. It's really sad. I think it's really sad. Um, but basically, in my opinion, he's throwing away his whole future because here's the thing: you can earn money, and you can increase your skills, you can increase your earning potential, you can increase your knowledge and education, while at the same time working on the music. 
there's nothing stopping you from doing that. So why not take that option so that at the worst, so that you're ready for a worst case scenario. So you're ready for if you're 40 and it turns out that your music didn't work out. Like for me and this YouTube channel, it might not work out for me. I'm willing to take that risk. I'm trying, I'm enjoying the process. I like it actually. And I'm okay if it never blows up. And if it never blows up, I've got other things going for me. I didn't put all my eggs into this one basket where I might not even have talent. Like, I don't know if I'm built to be a YouTuber or whatever. I just got this camera and I just started recording videos. I don't know if I'm built for it or whatever. Some people are naturally um, better at things than others. I don't think I have any particular talent for making YouTube videos. I just decided to go into this niche and to make content that I hope will help people. That's the goal. That's the goal of all these videos is to help the viewer, to help you. Um, so I try to share information that I think is going to help you. And the reason that I do that actually is because there's so much trash content on the internet that's just taking away from people's attention, taking away from people's focus. I know that there's a lot of channels already on self-improvement and this sort of thing. But I think another one in the space is only going to be a positive thing, particularly because the YouTube algorithm favors videos that are more recent, right? So those videos from the past, I think they're not going to be recommended as much unless people specifically search for those terms. But for with regards to the videos that appear on their YouTube channel page, I think that it's, I could be wrong, but I think it's the more recent videos generally that are highly preferred by the algorithm, which is a really great reason to get into YouTube, I think, because I think that this type of content is going to be beneficial to people. It's going to help wake them up a little bit more. Like, I'm not saying that, like, I'm enlightened or anything like that, but um, I know that most people are walking through life in basically a kind of days to steal Owen Cook's words on this matter. I didn't come up with that concept, but it's true. Even myself personally, I'm, I've, a lot of the time I've been walking the days throughout most of my life. And it's like when I'm making those conscious choices to push my comfort and to actually feel the discomfort, a lot of the time that's still not automatic for me. I have to consciously choose those decisions because I don't have these habits formed for a habit for feeling discomfort, for pushing myself into discomfort because most of our brain processes are automatic, right? We don't even think about it. We, we know it deep down. We know it. We're basically running on autopilot 95, 99% of the time. And then only the other 5% or 1% of the time we're actually thinking consciously about what choice to make. And the reason for that is once again, the path of least resistance and emotionality. So that ties back to the original theme of the video. So I think this video has gone on long enough. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, please subscribe, it helps the channel and it'll help more people see content like this. I hope you have a great day. Peace.